medalist, Kristen Luckenbill. The music of Wagon. And now, from Alumni Auditorium, here's Tim. Hey, thank you very much. My goodness gracious, wow. <laughs> thank you all very much. Wow, oh Zumba. <laughs> wow, thank you, hi Lori. Thank you all very much. What a good looking audience and welcome to the show, folks. You know what? We're halfway through October right now, which means that we're just a little over two weeks away from one of the spookiest and scariest times of year. Election season. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we're not going to worry about elections right now because tonight our guest is Olympic gold medalist Kristen Luckenbill. And we'll be hearing from the music of Wagon. Yes. But before we get to all that, we do have some spooky guests that are joining us. And they're from the haunted forest. And they're kind of staggering and making their way on board now. Are they spooky or what? Look at this. Jan, here's Jana, and looks like Lucifer is joining us. Hold that microphone. That's right. Just call me Lou for short. We're gonna call you Lou for short. And yeah. and who is your uh, who's your guest here with you? My name's Friday, because Friday is Halloween this year, and Friday is when we fry the children. I mean the bananas. Right, good. The bananas, right? Yeah. Fried bananas are, are always good. Friday. Uh, so tell us about the haunted forest. It, it, it's coming up. It's your 25th year. Is that correct? No, 28. We've been going more than 25 years. Yes, quick math would tell me that, I you guess. You must have taken math at Champlain College, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what can people expect at, at the Haunted Forest? Ooh, ooh, well this year, this year, we have Project X. Project X is our secret project to build a 17-foot tall animatronic monster. An animatronic monster? Yeah, it's our first robot. Wow, is that exciting, folks, or what? Oh, yes, my goodness. It's the coolest monster ever. Uh, now, you've already built it, or you're in the stages of it right now? It's coming tomorrow. It is, and do you have to put it together Friday? Because I, I think we should have it inspected first, if you are. I'm really good at mechanics. The blue wire gets cut so the bomb doesn't go off, right? Right, right, okay. That's now, cool. what about if folks, uh, if there's young kids and they don't want to go to one of the nighttime events, what, what, what might they find out? Oh, we have a great matinee oh. on Saturday Saturday. for the little tykes, yes. Okay. The one she was referring to when she was talking about Friday and, and doing something to our guests. Uh, we we'll want to tell you more about it when you come to the Haunted Forest. To the Haunted Forest. And so for more information about the Haunted Forest, where should folks go to? Ooh, we have our website, www.thehauntedforest.org, which is kind of instinctive when you think about it. We also have our ticket <laughs> line at 879-9160, and you can get tickets at the Alpine Shop, too. And they're selling out. And they're selling out. Yeah. All right. And we're always looking for volunteers, too, to help us with a variety of different things, such as carving pumpkins this weekend. And we have plenty of room for people that want to be artistic with pumpkins. All right, artistic with pumpkins. OK. Now you can call Janet at 238-0923. That's and the volunteer. website is on the screen right now at thehauntedforest.org. Let's give it up for him. Thank you. Happy Halloween to you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye now. Spooky. My goodness. All right. So there it is. Hey, you know what? One of the segments that we've been having a little bit of fun with here on the show is having folks get a chance to be my sidekick for the evening. So we ask audience members if they have a fun or interesting or embarrassing story that they would like to share with us. And we have found just such a character tonight. No. Tell us who you are. I'm Tad. Your Taj. Yeah. Put that microphone right up right close. Up <laughs> Taj, nice to see you. Now, Taj, actually, I know you. Yeah. Um, Burlington's a small area. You are the father of one of our crew members here, Chad. Yeah. Taj, Chad, do you do that on purpose yeah, well, so that you can name people? I'm doing that on purpose. I'm doing that yeah, on purpose? Yeah, yeah. But, well, it does get a little tongue twisting. 
Oh, I guess it does. We're going to have you hold that microphone up real nice and, and, okay. and close, just like that. So you have a funny uh, story that you want to share with all of us? Well, it's not so much funny, but it's a true story. All right, let's hear it. Okay, it's about a fish. Just yeah. like your hat here. Women want me, fish fear me. Well, <laughs> you didn't have to pull that one out. All right. That, that, that one's all part of it. But um, um, I, uh, I, I feed fish, and I have a couple ponds, and I... Uh, feed fish with minnows and which isn't uncommon for no with no, minnows okay no and i feed fish with minnows and um i, I have a feeling something's coming up here no oh yeah, yeah. and uh i feed fish with minnows and i saw before where uh, you actually can take minnows and you feed them enough times you can put it in their mouth in your mouth and then wait a minute you put the minnow in your mouth yes and then you can <laughs> actually Actually, you can go way down, way down, and feed them out of your mouth, and they will come right up and eat it. They, will they jump up to your mouth? No, but they will come up and nibble your lips. And what kind of fish are we talking about? We're talking about bass right now. We're talking about bass right now. We're talking about yeah, bass. Yeah, small mouth, large mouth. Rhymes uh, with? Yeah. Okay, good. All what right. Well, we're, we're gonna, but, Taz, that's an interesting story. Thank you for sharing. But that ain't the end. Yeah, that, that's not the end? No. Oh, all right. Well, what's the end? we got to well, wrap it up. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm, what, what actually happened is that the, the, the bass came and they took it out. But I, I reached in there and I had one left. And rather than feeding it this way, I thought I would give the, bat, the, 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 the minnow a chance. So I threw it out there, and before you know it, the minnow took off, and it was tunk, 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 and the bass, what'd they do? They came right behind it, tunk, 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 tunk. What do you think the, the minnow did? He landed on the beach, and he jumped in the beach, and he was in the sand. What do you think the bass did? He landed on the beach and rolled in the sand with the minnow and ate it. No. What, Taz? He flipped around, and then the minnow instead of staying there, he had to go back in the water. He flipped himself back in the water, and he took off. What do you think the bass did? You know what? We're going to finish bass, this story later. The <laughs> bass jumped in and took off. And took right off. Taz, everybody, that's excellent right there. Thanks for that great story. What we want you to do is we want you to be our wheel sponsor this evening. So we've got the lovely Miss Jen Jen standing by. She's spinning that wheel right now for you. All kinds of prizes up on that prize wheel for you. Whatever it lands on is what you're going to be going home with. You just stay right here with me because you're staying with me the entire show. Let's find out exactly what that wheel is going to land on from one of our great sponsors here on Late Night Saturday. It's slowing down there for you, Taj, and it looks like tonight it's going to land on, oh, could it be? Looks like it's landed on Periwinkle's fine jewelry. And Jamie Polly has a description of that. That means that you've got a real nice piece of jewelry coming to you from Periwinkle's fine jewelry. They have four locations all over the North Country, including Burlington and Plattsburgh. It's a prize value worth over $230. Yes. Plus, we're throwing in a jar of Jed's Maple Mud for you. It's right here. It's delicious. It's made up in the Northeast Kingdom. And we want to remind folks to listen to Champ 101.3 for details about the show. We've got a lot more Late Night Saturday coming up. We'll be right back right after this. Good evening and welcome to Late News Saturday. In today's news, the popular downtown eatery, Smoke Jacks, surprised area residents recently by closing its doors without notice. Public reaction was mixed, which we know because we conducted a survey called the Smoke Jacks Poll. We asked 100 women the Smoke Jacks Poll, and they said they could go either way, but that typically, polls just left a bad taste in their mouths. 100 men were also polled, and we found that after enduring such a hard and lengthy task, most men were out of breath. All others polled said the restaurant was rather up and down. If you'd like to be a Smoke Jack's poll participant, please contact Jack. In other news, with foreclosures up 41% in Vermont and with Halloween just two weeks away, it appears that trick-or-treaters will, will have to look elsewhere for candy this year. Perhaps Vermonters will have to cross the lake to see what Chris Orloff has to offer in terms of tricks or treats. And now for today's weather. Chad? Contact Jack, avoid Orloff. Chad. Yes. 
Oh, weather. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, weather. Actually, today, folks, uh, you know, instead of the weather, uh, I wanted to uh, shoot the breeze with you a little bit about our foggy political climate. You know, we all have this cloud of suspicion lingering overhead, kind of like the calm before the storm. We know that uh, when it rains, it pours, and although every cloud has a silver lining, into each life some rain must fall. Now, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade here, but when you're running seven sheets to the wind, creating a tempest in a teapot just to steal another candidate's thunder, well, you're nothing but a fair weather friend chasing rainbows. When we hit rough weather, any port in a storm will do. So, after the fog lifts in the clear light of day, we need to wake up, throw caution to the wind, and stem the tide of our own dry spell. I may be just twisting in the wind here with a face like thunder, but my opinion of these greased lightning campaigns, I'll take a rain check. I know which way the wind blows. Tim? Thank you very much to our Late News Saturday. Hey folks, if you are looking out there for a place for a great Halloween costume or costume ideas for Halloween or perhaps even theme night for your special loved one, check out Lori and her staff at Triple Loop in Colchester. They have over 400 costumes and will actually custom make and design costumes for you. Triple Loop has provided numerous outfits for, here, uh, for us here at Late Night Saturday and we couldn't do it without them. So thank you very much for Triple Loop. <laughs> All right, our friends at the House of LeMay have made a movie titled Slingbacks and Syrup. Slingbacks and Syrup, that's kind of a funny title, huh? That's cool, I like that. Yes, it follows the ladies from Beaver Pond, Vermont, and here's a look at the film. I think what people like about the LeMays is we're all different. <laughs> I, or my character, Lucy Bell, decided that she is going to be the pretty one. He's a bitch. He gives us so much freedom to do what we, what we want to do. Do these shoes make my tits look too big? I don't think you'd see that in a lot of different parts of America, especially right now. We are the House of LeMay. The House of LeMay. Well, let me tell you, Slingbacks and Syrup will be playing at the Waterfront Theater in Burlington on October 25th at 9 p.m. And another film, Work a Double, a film by director and also our producer here at Late Night Saturday, Frank O'Neill. It features a number, number of local actors, including myself there, Taj. Yeah, that will also play at the Waterfront Theater on October 24th at 7 p.m. Both films are entrants in the Vermont International Film Festival and are free to the public, so go out and support local films. All right, you know what? It's time to go ahead and check in with John McCain's running mate and governor of Alaska, Sarah Palin. <laughs> governor Palin, are you out there? Good evening, Governor Palin. How are things out there on the campaign trail? Well, Tim, it hasn't been easy. People have been mocking me, and the liberal gotcha media have been downright nasty. And you know, some folks think I'm too pretty for politics. Heck. How do they think I became governor of Alaska? <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Governor. How do you stay in shape both physically and mentally? I don't want to answer that question. I just want to talk directly to the American people. Hello, American people. <laughs> All right, Governor, Governor. How do you feel uh, about the, how the debate went with you and Joe Biden? I know it was over two weeks ago, but how do you feel it came out? Oh, you know, we touched on many issues. But, you know, I was very distracted by the moderator, Queen Latifah. <laughs> right in the beginning of the debate, Senator Joe Biden said to me, it's a pleasure to be with you. Let me state something to the American people right now. I, Sarah Palin, future vice president, would never be with a Democrat. <laughs> Although I do think Obama's kind of hot. <laughs> All right, well, speaking on that subject, uh, what do you feel about same-sex marriage? Tim, sex is never the same after marriage. That is a global issue. Well, that may be true, but as Vice President, uh, what positions will you take most seriously? Well, you know, I do take all my positions very seriously. Just ask my husband, the first dude, he'll tell you. <laughs> all right, never mind. Uh, what makes you think that you're more equipped to be a Vice President than Joe Biden? Oh, well, that's a very good question. Let me share my thoughts on that. Well, 
Yes, uh, your, uh, your thoughts? You, you wanted to share your thoughts on that? Oh, oh, you betcha. On what? <laughs> Listen, ne never mind. What I wanted to know was, do you feel that you're more equipped to be vice president than Joe Biden? Oh, some people think I'm not equipped to be vice president of the United States, but let me show you how equipped I am. Whoa. All right, my goodness. Look at the guns on those right there. All right, the governor of Alaska, wow. My goodness. It might be cold in Alaska, but the governor's a hottie, isn't she, Taz? Huh? All right, well, it's time to bring out tonight's guest. She not only had the opportunity to represent the United States in the Olympic Summer Games, she also won a gold medal with the women's soccer team. Won't you please welcome Kristen Luckinbill. <laughs> Say hi to Taj. Thank you very much for being here. Pleasure. Yeah, it, it was so it's so exciting to, to meet you. Um, I have a real big thing for, for the Olympics. I've always enjoyed watching the Olympics. My family enjoys watching it. The the whole pageantry, the 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 athletics. Um, it's just such a wonderful thing to watch and witness and experience, and, and you got to do that, which is, which is just amazing. Yeah, it really was a dream come true, and the whole experience left me, it, it's so hard to even pick the best parts. Obviously, winning the gold medal was huge, but the experience of meeting the athletes from you know, all over the world, different sports, different experiences, uh, it's been fantastic. Really? Okay, we, they want you to hold this microphone, I guess, right okay. here. That's our stage manager rolling off the stage as we speak right now, Jamie Pauly. <laughs> well done, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Could you use them on your team? Uh, I mean, I'm the goalkeeper. I'm usually the one that rolls around the ground, but if you're trying to take my position... Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So you just had some exciting news um, that you can share with us about the Boston Breakers. Yes, I just got drafted to the new Women's Professional Soccer League. <laughs> Which is great. So t tell us what, what that means. I mean, that means you're, you're going to be moving down to the Boston area then. Absolutely. I'll move down. We start preseason in March. Wow. And what, what type of a season are we talking about? Uh, it'll run from March through uh, the end of August. So the finals will be, I think it's August 22nd. And uh, hopefully Boston Breakers will be there. And, and how has Boston, the Boston Breakers fared before you came along? Uh, well, we, you, in the old professional league, uh, the WSA, the Boston Breakers, actually existed. This year will be the new, a restart of a new league. Okay. So same ownership, totally new players, and actually I used to play for the Carolina team, and most of the time we beat Boston. No kidding. So, so now you're going to bring that luck that you had from the Carolina team, and, and you're going to push it into, into Beantown. I hope so. Good for you. Yeah, How did you plan. get into soccer? Uh, I've probably played soccer since, uh, since I was five or six, as long as I can remember. I've, I grew up in Philadelphia. And big sports town, big sports family. I played every sport, and soccer's the one that I you know, was the best at and loved the most. And I hear, other than soccer, your, your passion is watching the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the Flyers, but this week, it's the Phillies. Oh, yeah, how about series, that? So, yeah, uh, they, they took over from the Dodgers, didn't they? Exactly. They, yeah. they took care of them pretty easily. To so. heck with Manny, right? Yeah, forget about him. They, you know, Boston... Not doing so well without him, but the Dodgers didn't win with him. So. Right, right. So, so you like the Flyers. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Olympics, because I think this is just, just such a, a great topic to talk about. When you started out playing soccer when you're five years old, did you ever dream about the Olympics? I mean, when did, when did the Olympics just first enter your head? Um, as an athlete, I think everyone thinks about the Olympics, and you want to go to the Olympics as a childhood dream, but I don't even think I thought about the Olympics until I was invited in with the national team in 2004. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so, so I had gone that through college, went. I played professionally for three years, never brought into the team, and then finally invited in for a tryout in 2004. It's like a four-month tryout. It's not like one of those tryouts where you show up for a weekend. But did the whole four-month training, and uh, at the end of it, I was named to the roster. No kidding. And I wouldn't have believed it, uh, you know, even four months prior to that. So you, so you went to the Olympics. You, you went to the Olympics in Athens. Yes. With, with the, uh, the women's um, soccer team, which they won gold medal for. Yes, we did. And Kristen has that medal. Do you have that medal I right do. here? Yeah, I 
This is the actual gold medal right there. Check this out. Look at that right there. Is that the most beautiful thing ever? Can we turn it around? Sure. It's got an ancient Greek poem on the back, which is actually in ancient Greek. So when I asked a bunch of people in Greece what it meant, none of them knew because they weren't ancient, ancient Greeks. <laughs> um, but um, it's from the original uh, uh, Olympics in Greece uh, from a long time ago. The poem, so. And it is heavy. It's very heavy. Have you yeah. ever thought about melting this down and getting uh, cash for gold? Um, not yet, but the way things are going, I, I might have to. Although that will be my, that will be the last possession that I uh, that I sell. I think that's beautiful. I, I bet that doesn't stay far from you, huh? Uh, it's either in my room with me, uh, on me, or in a safe deposit box, <laughs> which, which is easily the safest place. Well, thanks for coming here and spending a little bit of time with us. We appreciate right. it. And good luck with the Boston Thank Breakers. You very much. We'll be right back with more Late Night Saturday right after this. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Won't you, thank you very much. Won't you please welcome to the Fairpoint Communications stage of favorite local band, give it up for Wagon.
Why, why even try? I'm at home alone, I think of it. I breathe a lonely sigh. the taste and hospitality of Vermont's Little Italy at Junior's Italian in Colchester. From fine dining to pizza and all of your bakery or catering needs, Junior's Italian, when only Italian will do. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. My thanks to my guests from the Haunted Forest, my sidekick, Kristen Wagonville, or Kristen Luckinville, Wagonville. You guys are wagon. Kristen Lag Luckinville, I can't even say it now. And musical group Wagon. These guys are going to be playing at Nectar's on October 24th. Be sure to join us next week for the music of the kind buds and a political debate between Anthony Polina and Governor Jim Douglas. Remember to support local artists just like the folks that you've seen here tonight. We'll see you next time on Late Night Saturday. Take it away, guys. Thank you.